Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar on the November release. So we had a major release last week. So today's session is all about looking at the new fields that we have added for Avitmus 8 reporting and all the feature updates that we have done to the reports, timetables and the credential pages. We've also improved a lot of bulk update features, which I'll uh, probably explain more when I go into those pages and show you how to bulk update some of those delivery modes and um, key statuses that we have added to the system. So I'm just going to quickly go into the release notes. Probably have already had a look at the release notes that um, Jess sent out. Um, you know, it would have been a communication sent out in the LRM. So in the release notes, you would have seen that the different things that we have released last week. So we made some major changes to timetables, the way you run reports, the way you run credentials, of course, the Evicness 8, UIP for New Zealand, we added a new article on the end of the year Avitmus reporting uh, to help you kind of start testing the data, run your data integrity reports and get prepared for uh, your end of the year reporting for funded data in Jan. I'm also running an exclusive webinar tomorrow just looking at all the different reports that you can run and how to validate and check your error files tomorrow. The PAR reporting stands for provider information request. That's mainly for higher education providers that um, kind of deliver fee-for-service training and they have to report to HEPCAT. So we've introduced the PAR reporting. Um, we celebrate 20 years in WiseNet this year. So a bit of, you know, a cheer there. So uh, we've just added some information about our history and everything and of course, it's more to do with like, you know, bug fixes and of course all the bulk of their pages have to be changed, as I said, to accommodate all the Avitmus 8 changes. You don't have to do anything, um, you know, from your end, there's no action required at the moment, but from 2018, you may have to start using those fields to populate data. So just scrolling down, looking at, the, I'll get to the bulk update functionalities when I go into WiseNet, but in terms of the timetable, people who attended my webinar last week may already know this. So what we did was we got rid of the um, status called invited and changed it to enrolled, the accepted change to attended, and we introduced three more statuses called absent medical leave and approved leave. So for all the statuses that was previously set to accepted 0% or like, you know, invited, we automatically, um, you know, wrote a script in the background to change everything to absent when the attendance was attended and 0%, it was automatically put to absent when the class start date is in the past. And for any classes in the future, with an invited was put to enrolled. So you, you don't have to do anything, as I said, and you know, we have already made these changes automatically. Um, so you can run your reports, all our reports have been changed. It'll be really uh, helpful because we have kind of, you know, gone through all the reports and changed everything. But, you know, when once you start applying for your own processes and scenarios, you might find something different and, you know, some things may not kind of line up to your processes. So uh, we are happy to hear those suggestions. And if you could raise a ticket and explain to us what's happening and what are the different reports you're using, we are happy to look at it and change them for you. But for more detailed information on how to mark or edit attendance or look at the list of attendance reports, just go into these links from within our release notes. With the credentials, again, I'll probably go in detail when we go into the credentials pages. Uh, I would be able to explain it better for you. Same with the reports. And at the very bottom, you can see that, you know, throughout the system now in Wiseset LRM, we've introduced tooltips. That's what we call them. It's the orange question marks that you see in various pages against all the new Avitmus 8 fields and you know all the complicated fields. That's just to give you more information on needs to be put into that field. And if you need more information, we have even linked uh, the field to the right article. So click on the tooltip to learn more when you're within the LRM. Now, looking at uh, the learner app timetable, I'll explain how the attendance is calculated when we go into LRM, but the learner app timetable, we kind of tweaked it a little bit. So when the students now enroll, uh, I mean, log into their learner app, they not only see just the attendance and the date and the class codes, we kind of 
um, out of even the venue and the trainer with the day because most of the students wanted like, you know, whether the date was a Monday or a Tuesday. So they wanted the day with the date. So we have included that um, as well as the attendance, which will show either attended, absent, or, you know, not included in the attendance. So they know that any enrolled, anything that's in gray, could be a medical leave or approved leave is not calculated within the attendance. They also see the number of classes on leave that they've taken, um, what's the attendance they've achieved so far and the max possible. So these are some of the things that we added to the learner app to make it more um, streamlined for the students. So when they look at the attendance, know, they know exactly what they've achieved. All right, now going into Australia specific information, as I said, and I reintroduced the new article on end of the year reporting, please do have a look at it. I will be going in detail into uh, evidence reporting in tomorrow's webinar, but today I'm mostly concentrating on the field changes and additions. With the Evitmus 8 fields, the major change has been to the back end. You know? So we have done all that for you. So we have to change all the exports, um, the state exports as well as the NCBER exports. Um, you know, they have to be formatted in a certain way for especially South Australia, New South Wales and Victoria. Of course, even WA because they have a different format. It's called a wrap reporting. So we've made all those changes for you. You don't have to know um, how to action those because it's already done but in terms of the field changes when you go into our Evitmus 8 article we've just created a table in here for all the new fields that we have introduced and what you need to do you would have seen a new survey status field against the learner so when you create a learner profile the survey status is under the personal details so that's mandatory now for all states you have to complete that for NAT 80 the program status, that's a VIC only field and you will find it under the course enrollment. The parchment number is nothing but the credential number. Previously, it was not reported to the government, but now um, it's reported in the NAT 130 file. That's your qualification file. Again, that's for all states, so it's mandatory. You don't have to generate a number. As you know, Wisenet auto generates a credential number. This needs to be filled out only if you are running credentials outside YSET. So if you're issuing qualifications outside YSET, then you have to type in that number within the course enrollment. Again, I'll show that to you when we go into the LRM. The delivery mode has been the biggest change in Avitness 8. So you have to be mindful of what to add in for the predominant delivery mode as well as the del delivery mode ABA. So you can continue to use the existing delivery modes for 2017, but come 2018, you have to start using the AV8, the Evitness 8 delivery modes, including the predominant ones. There's two different sets of delivery modes. People who don't deliver for WA state reporting, don't worry about the WA codes. You just have to look at the old states. And for WA, we have a special, uh, special section now for all the WA codes. In terms of the mapping, you know, because obviously you're going to have continuing students from 2017 moving into 2018, what we have done is uh, mapped it up for you. So if you go into our delivery mode mapping article, it kind of specifically shows you like, you know, how we've mapped it. So the national delivery mode mapping is like this, you know, so this, this is what it was previously called in Avatma 7 and this is the new delivery mode in Everett 8 and the predominant. So what we have done is if you have chosen classroom based as 10, then we have automatically put it to a Y and N for the new delivery mode and an I for a predominant delivery mode. So we have automatically kind of mapped it to the new uh, delivery modes. If you do have other delivery, which is correspondence, then you just have to check what is applicable and choose the right delivery mode. But most of the other delivery modes would be like either a 10, 20, 30 or a 90. And we have already mapped it up to the new modes. For WA, anything that had the code before has been put to the alphabetical codes now. And this is the mapping for your WA delivery modes. Again, if you do deliver like, you know, video or television based learning or online learning, you just have to check which one you want to relate it to because 
we were not 100% sure of what it maps to and we couldn't get inf information from the department. So probably, you know, if you do get funding or uh, if you know exactly what these map to with the new delivery modes, you can just bulk update it. All right, looking at the new values and validation that we have added, um, the outcome code 41 has been introduced, which is for uh, an incomplete due to RTO closure outcome for the units. I don't know if you will be using that very often, but that's one of the outcome codes that's been used. And a program identification code of 22, 14 and 42 have been introduced. Now going back into the new fields, there's also an other outcome code, which is outcome 85, which has been introduced in the system for not yet started. It was added uh, in the previous release itself, and that's the reason you don't see it here, but I'll show, show it to you. Uh, it's not a mandatory requirement for you to give an 85 to all the students, uh, but I guess, you know, they've introduced it in sort of a 90, which was previously used last year. So 85 is something very similar. It's for not yet started. For WA compliance, there are two other fields that are mandatory, which is the employer invoice flag and the funding removed flag. So for WA customers, please do make a note of these two fields. They have to be completed for your RAP reporting. All right, great. Going back to the release notes, that's mostly uh, what you require for Avidmus 8. Then we have introduced the start and end date for your contracts. This was mainly introduced for WA again, but you can, I mean, other states can also use it to archive your contracts. So any contract after that end date will not show up in your contract or the training schedule list. And when you're running your reports, when you choose your contracts, it's not going to show you anything that's past the end date. Avidmus export changes. We've just made it very easy for you guys. So in 2017, until the end of the year reporting, when you've run your exports, it'll automatically report AV7. And from next year, when you choose the collection period as 2018, it'll automatically run the Avidmus 8 NAC files. For NSW, again, we've just streamlined it. Anything with 2018 will only include smart and skill reporting option. When you select 2014 and before, then it'll give you the APL claiming screens. I don't think you'll be doing any APL reporting unless another government asks you for it. And if you have to do it, just ensure you choose anything 2014 and before as the collection period. Um, yeah, we spoke about the outcome codes. As I said, the 85 is not like, you know, um, mandatory, it's just an optional outcome. If you want to use it, you can use it. They've introduced it for 2018 again. Um, some general improvements. A lot of people who are asked us if we can include a couple other dates at the unit enrollment level, um, especially the proposed start and end dates. So we've introduced the proposed start and end date within the unit enrollment. It can also be used to display on your training plans if required. Uh, the merge fields have been made available in your dictionary. So please feel free to copy and paste it into your training plans. You can bulk update the proposed start and end dates as well. The orientation date is mainly added for international clients. So if you want your orientation date to show up on your offer letters and things, you can use it. It's been added to the course offer screen as well as the course enrollment screen just to make it easier for you guys. So there's a new date called orientation date. All right, PAR reporting, major changes because we had to include a lot of fields for higher education. So if you're a higher education customer, um, I don't want to go in detail into it because they're just fields that are required for your PIR reporting and you may be uh, already familiar with some of these because you've been doing your fee help uh, reporting to HEPCAT. So just have a look at these things and if you have any questions, feel free to call us and I'm happy to help um, in terms of you know, what data needs to be entered into these things. And we have even included fields at the course offer level so it can default to the course enrollment. All right, for New Zealand, UIP was a major thing. We've been working on updating and improving the integration. So you will hear more from us on the UIP. And of course, you know, we've put in our holiday periods. So we would be closed from the 23rd until the 8th. And, you know, we would really uh, appreciate it if you could please log all your support tickets by Wednesday the 20th. So it gives us time to get back to you and help you in a proper way. And yeah, Vice has celebrated 20 years, so we kind of um, had a good cocktail party. We met most of you there, so thanks for coming. 
and supporting us. Plus, uh, you also helped us with the new resource survey and things like that, which, you know, kind of has given birth to this new learned resources. We are getting really good feedback on that. So thanks for that as well. The old uh, resource center, which was on Media Wiki, is going to be shut down in 2018. So early 2018, you'll only have access to learn.wisen.co. The help.wisen will be closed. Great. Let me quickly now go into LRM. So I'm going to start with the learners with the survey status. So for every learner, I'm just going to pick up a random student here. So go action, edit personal. So under the personal details, you'll see a new field called survey status. So that's required for your NAT 80. It's an Avitness 8 field. So please choose the appropriate option for any students enrolling or continuing to 2018 and who are kind of you know, eligible for 2018 reporting. You need to fill this detail up. And these are the tool tips we're talking about. Just click on it and it'll give you more information. And of course you can even click into more information and you know, uh, navigate to the resource center. Going back to the client profile, new fields in here, the parchment number, program status. Again, that's mandatory for Victoria and of course the orientation date. So all this is against the course enrollment. Within the unit enrollment, if you go into select, view or edit, you'll see the new proposed start and end date. So what gets reported to the government is still the same, the start and end date here. The proposed start and end date is just for your internal purposes for your training plans and other things. Plus you will see the delivery modes now. So we have still kept the AV7 because you know you have to complete your end of the year reporting and you will still see it, but anything moving forward has to be the delivery mode AV8 and the predominant delivery mode. If you need more information about how to set the delivery mode moving forward, please do look at your Avitma statistical guidelines. It explains what every delivery mode is useful so you can map it up accordingly. Now on the unit enrollment screen, uh, Previously, you know, when you used to bulk update, you didn't have all the options come up. So we have made a change to the bulk update feature where it looks very similar to the other bulk updates that you see from the course of enrollments and you have access to updating any field against the unit enrollment. So it could be the unit fees, resource fee, any of it can be changed now using the bulk update function. For WA compliance, the delivery modes, there are three different delivery modes that you have to choose and it's all in here. Same like the way we have the predominant and the actual one. So for, uh, for WA, you have three. So they're the same options, but you'll have to choose three different delivery modes for your students. And of course, the employee invoice and the funding removed. In WA, if you're still fee for service and if you don't report to the state, don't worry about filling up the WA only delivery modes. You can just use the delivery mode AV8 and predominant delivery mode because you're just reporting to national. Only if you're getting state funding from the WA state government, then use the WA delivery modes. So that's one of the bulk update functions. Now, if you go into the course offer, again, we've made a little bit of changes there. The orientation date has been added to make it easier. You know, you already know that we had like, you know, uh, the commencing course ID, study reason and all that introduced at the course offer level. But we kind of split it into two different bits now. So you exactly know that anything that you put in here goes against the course enrollment default. And then this goes under the unit offer default, which is your delivery modes, your funding sources your contract details and all those different things. Now, if you go into unit offers, similarly, you, when you set defaults, we'll give you all the options now, made it easier. You have the WA compliance there. And when you go into the enrollments and bulk update unit enrollments, same options in here. So it's all streamlined now. You can bulk update these fields, from any of these bulk update pages. It could be from the learner, it could be from the course offer, or it could be from uh, you know, the unit offer. So it's up to you. We've just made it very consistent now so you can update these pages from anywhere. All right, that's with the major AV8 changes. You know, that's what you need to do. As I said, you know, from the client's point of view, in terms of the data entry, not many changes, it's just a couple of fields. Delivery mode uh, is the major one. The most part of the you know, changes was like in the exports and we've taken care of that for you. So that's all sorted. 
Now, going into the feature updates, after we ran our reports webinar, we got a lot of feedback on the way, you know, the reports are run and like the way you find your reports is like really hard. So we've started kind of working on this page. Uh, we still like, this is just the version one, just to make it easier. What we've done is we've just kind of renamed the way you, the different stages in which you run the report, I must say. So the step one is choosing the right report. You can either choose by the category, by the number, name, or the field. And once you choose the report, it kind of streamlines the entire process for you. It asks you whether you want to subscribe to the report. So if you want the report to be emailed to you, just go yes. Then it appropriately asks you for the filter. You can say, all right, I want uh, to pick up anybody with a start date in the next week or the next month, for example. And then it asks you like, you know, how do you want to generate the report? So once you click on generate a report, it kind of gives you the options to export. So when you subscribe to the report, you can't download that report to a spreadsheet. So when you put the value as no in the subscription, it automatically recognizes that it's not for subscription. It allows you to download just the raw data in Excel. So these are some of the things that we have changed. So you don't have to click back and forth and find out what reports you can subscribe to and what, you know, what kind of export functions you have within the reports and things like that. Same with the credentials. When you went into the credential register, previously, you know, you could just, uh, again, we have communications there. You can click into and find out more about how the credentials are issued now. So previously you could just go preview the credential and you can easily forget to issue them because you've just previewed it and there's no um, note or anything on the page to tell you that it's just a previewed credential. So we had a lot of tickets on it just to improve that process. Now, when you click on preview, it doesn't take you into the next page. It just keeps you on the same page. And it says, all right, review the generated files. If the format is good, you can go ahead and issue it. Or if you have a problem, you can go back, fix it and preview it again. So at least now it prompts you that you have to issue it. It's not issued yet, you know? So when you click on issue selected credentials, then if it's a qualification, then it automatically kind of sets the credential status to issued, saves the document within the client credential and sets all these different things to yes, the parch parchment number to the credential number, as well as the date issued to the credential date. Now it also puts in a warning to say that you're issuing certificates to a student who has incomplete unit enrollment. So the student has not completed units in these courses that you're running the credential for. So you need to go back, complete the student, and then come back and issue it. So there's warnings that have been added into all these different places. And you don't have to manually tick things. Once you choose yes, it'll automatically do all these different things for you, just to make it easier for your compliance. When it's a no, when it's just a statement of attainment, then the credential status is just put to issued and I know the document is just saved. There's no date issued or anything of that sort. So it's not taken as a certificate. All right. So these are the changes with the credentials and the reports. Any questions? I'll probably quickly um, go back into the timetables as well. I know most of you attended my timetables webinar last week but I'll probably just quickly take you through that as well. So as I said in our previously within the timetables you had like different statuses now you've just made it easier for you to mark attendance and stuff so when you go into this page for the clients you can see now everything is attended it's not accepted it makes more sense to see attended and then when you mark attendance it automatically gives you like a comments box when you put the student to absent it removes the time and time out you can even put in a comment to say like why the student is absent or when you put the student to be medical leave or approved leave, it even removes the attendance and it's excluded from the calculation. And when you go update clients, it automatically shows that it's absent or medical leave. Previously, it had just one status call accepted and depending on the percentage, you had to know whether the student is absent or cancelled or anything of that sort. So we've just streamlined that process and we've even improved the navigation. When you click on the student's name, it automatically takes you into the actual student's timetable page where you can click through different timetables and look at the different classes 
the student has attended with their attendance in here and as, of course the number of classes on leave and the average and the max possible attendance all right that's mostly what i wanted to show you today um, if you have any questions you know once you've started using these fields and functionalities feel free to call us and ask us or log a ticket if you have more suggestions we're always open to uh, new ideas and suggestions from our clients to make it easier uh, to make the system easy to use so yeah feel free to lock tickets and call us and give us your suggestions okay Leanne's asked a question can I please confirm that you only tick the qualification you should flag when it's a full qualification correct so in that option there when it says uh, let me go back to the credential page for you. So when you go issue, it asks you, is this the final qualification? So if it's a unit of competency or a short course, you would just leave it as a no. You don't have to tick anything. When you say yes, then it automatically does the rest of the things for you. I have another question. It says, will our current 2017 learners roll over easily for Avitmus 8, or do we need to go in and bulk update them? Um, as I said, you know, for your continuing learners, you don't have to roll them out because um, we've already run scripts in the back end to map all the delivery modes and stuff. But what you may need to do is any new learners that you add for 2018, you have to ensure those learner profile things like survey statuses and um, things like that have been updated accordingly. But anything to do with continuing student uh, data like delivery modes and stuff we have already updated it for you Deborah that's what I said like if it's a 40 we were we weren't a hundred percent sure what it relates to and we couldn't get um, uh, the right information from the government as well if you use 40 for like correspondence or the delivery I think that's what 40 is for just find out what's the right uh, delivery mode for in Avitness 8 and uh, we may be able to run a script for you. So just uh, raise a ticket and let us know that this is what it is. Uh, and if you could just send us any communication that you've received from the department. Oh yeah, of course you can bulk update it yourself or yeah, just send us the information so we can even um, run a script for you and bulk update all the 40s to the relevant Everton's 8 delivery mode. Uh, Linda, okay, Linda's asked me a question. Our credentials have a separate number for both set and academic transcription remember last night. Which one will be record? Okay, the parchment number is all always for the certificate number. So when you choose, you know, obviously I'm guessing when you issue a certificate, that's when you're saying that it's a fun qualification and that's the parchment number. So what gets reported in the NAT 130 is the number that you have against this certificate so when you choose it's a full qualification we would copy that certificate number to the parchment number okay i have another question from rose uh in regards to the credentials issued we have some students that partially complete some units in the course they need these units urgently so we issue them with a statement of attainment for security do we leave it as a no until the yes you're right so because you're giving a statement of attainment at that point you have to leave it to a no, it's not a full qualification. And when they actually complete a full qualification in the future, then you say yes to it. And that's when it will copy the credential number to the parchment number and report in the NAT 130. Yeah, so when you choose that it's a full qualification, it wouldn't be overridden. The students would just have two credentials against the name, but as a parchment number, it would just be you know, the certificate number. Because when you issue a statement of attainment, the parchment number would be blank. There wouldn't be anything in there. Of course, the SOA document itself will have a credential number, but that's that's different to the parchment number that's reported. Hope that makes sense. We do record the SOA numbers in the credential register, but not the parchment number. Parchment number is a new field for 2018 Everton's 8 reporting, and that's reported only for full qualifications. Thank you very much, guys, again. Uh, thanks for attending the webinar. Um, yeah, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Bye.